Hello, we are here in Academy Day number five, and with me is uh, Mats and uh, Tron from uh, Mir in Norway. And uh, I would like to start with a question, uh, picking up on uh, the title of your presentation yesterday, which is Mir is a restaurant. So the concept of uh, having a studio doing visualizations with tables and like a some kind of rigid uh, construct in which you fit your client's work. I, I'm interesting to know how can you. Uh, distill this flexible nature of the work and the dynamics of architectural projects within that kind of uh, rigid construct. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, it's um, this rigid uh, rigidness uh, when we book one week per one person uh, for one image. It's um, uh, we, it has a lot to do with preparation, pre preparing the client uh, how how we do it. So it means um, we, we tell them up front that uh, we're going to do this starting on Monday at 9. Friday evening we're finished. So it means that we have to do certain things to make sure this is the way. Um, and, uh, and then, as, as you say, the nature is uh, not so uh, easy. So they say, oh yeah, but we cannot have the 3D model final, uh, finished by Monday. So then we uh, agree that they give us a pre pre preliminary model on the Monday morning. And by Tuesday, Wednesday, they provide us with the with the final model, and this way we can still work within this. Uh, so we have some flexibility in that sense, and also uh, if we have the time for it, maybe we can even get a head start the Friday before uh, on the next week's project. So so we have a little bit of flex uh, more than maybe we give the impression uh, to the client, and of course in the end when it always happens that um, the boss on the top that nobody heard about before. Uh, he has the comment that we need to change everything on the Friday. Then they know that this will uh, have serious consequences. So we might not have time to, to do it. Uh, if we do it, we anyway have to charge extra for it. So we have, in that sense, we prepare them for this rigidness. So it, in, in most cases it works out because I think they take, it, take this into consideration when they book us and when they plan ahead. Uh, preparing the people that they have to answer to, that they have to give the feedback earlier in the week, so it's time, yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe you have something more. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a cliché, this thing, because the way I read your uh, answer is also uh, how you can sort of prefer, perform artistically within sort of this kind of uh, strict frame set. And I think that that's it's a bit of a cliché that arti artists uh, sort of like uh, go about things in a very whimsical way. If you look at the writers, for instance, most of them have quite strict working procedures. They go up, they write, and they go home, sort of. Uh, and that's something that we met at art school, and we sort of found this, that people are sort of living this idea of like this bohem or whatever, to, and sort of that's what you need to make art, and they sit in, on the floor with drawings everywhere. And we sort of like, I think that's one of the things that sort of where we found each other. That's not how things work for us. You know, you have to sit down and sort of uh, reserve time for when you're actually going to do things. Uh, you agree about that? Yeah. yeah. Actually, um, this, this is a very long answer to, to, to the question. But yeah, <laughs> but um, I remember we, we uh, there was this time uh, about the period uh, when we really had to think. Where should we take me uh, now? Because uh, we were overworked, and uh, as Tron has talked about in the in the lectures, um, so we made these um, uh, this like commandments. We, the, it was the eleven commandments, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what is what what needs to be the circumstance and the working climate for us as artists to perform the best? So then one of these, we, had, we need to have the time and attention to this one project and not handle a million projects at the same time. So this is, is where it comes from, Tom comes from, this with the booking, back to your question, that um, we need to be dedicated to this client and to this image as much as we can, with a little bit of flex, maybe before and after, but this dedication is mo one of the prime, prime things we decided on, uh, on doing. It's, it's an issue of focus, I mean, essentially, it's like focusing on the project, on the client, without any distraction, and then just, you know, each one in his own time. Okay, cool. 
Um, also picking up on the on the presentation, um, you also mentioned that you do not consider yourself as technical artist and that the actual software being used for modeling or for rendering doesn't have really uh, a big of an issue about the end result. So um, seeing new technologies being developed and considering each artist that might come work in your studio, might use something else. Uh, how do you see yourself in relate, relation to that and within like five years from now, how Mir will go about doing its visualizations considering these developments? Um, yes, that's an interesting question and I also heard throughout the day that people still wonder if we have any what's the secret uh, uh, secret uh, technical tips that, that we are not telling uh, everyone but um, but again I mean since uh, since images have uh, been part of the human uh, human nature uh, whether it's painting or just some line drawing in the sand uh, going way back it's uh, it's uh, still not a matter of the technical uh, aspects the way we approach it and th uh, there is a base of, of because the technology that we're using and we're not using um, pencils and, and, and pens, we're, we're using computers and software, so of course it's a big part uh, and, ma and maybe the technical part was actually what getting us into this in the first place because the interest in, in the 3D uh, and Photoshop and opportunities that it provided but, uh, uh, but, but for us now, for Tron and myself, we can't keep up uh, with the technical development so much um, um, uh, and, and, and we are at okay with that because we see that uh, even with uh, uh, <laughs> old versions of Lightwave we are managing uh, to make the images that, that we in the heart feel is, is the good image. Um, but that said, uh, when the new guys come in the office, uh, not a generation with more technical um, knowledge than ourselves, it's very refreshing also. And the tools uh, that they provide for example, doing aerial images, um, uh, and they can come up with these uh, forests uh, and trees, uh, roads, and everything that looks uh, computer generated. Uh, uh, for me in Tron, it would be more uh, hard to do it <laughs> because we would uh, need to spend hours uh, matte painting all this stuff together if you don't have a photo. So uh, clearly, it's advantages, but we still think in five years that it will not change so much. We will have new tools, new things to help us, maybe move quicker along with quicker software. Uh, but the fundamentals, like Tron has been lecturing about these two lectures, uh, about the emotions in images, is still that big of a part of it that we're not so scared about not keeping up uh, maybe 100% on the technical part. No, uh, just that we're not uh, like purists in any way about this, uh, that we don't, it's not like we hate computers or everything. I think we just adapt to whatever makes sense, you know? and. It's been like that since the start. Like you see something, but we're not. I, I don't think we are the guys who's going to push anything, you know. But we, we appreciate, and it, it's much fun to see uh, the advancement in technology and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, just a, a quick like met, met, uh, like a, a comparison. It's uh, uh, in, in, in 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 the in the old days, people using paint and, and canvas and, and brushes. I'm pretty sure they also, uh, the way they taught each other to do these paintings, they're also discussing the different uh, uh, pigments and the different uh, canvas types and how they, all these techniques. But in the end, uh, the paintings that we remember today, uh, of course it's a result of, te of te techniques uh, and, and, and materials and, uh, and these things, but um, I still think uh, this is not the biggest part uh, of, of this, uh, uh, you say. Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, th uh, so to wrap it up, um, I think it will be very interesting to the, to the viewers to, to know a little bit more about uh, you as partners and uh, tell us a little bit about how it is to be a partner and how it is, what is your actual daily uh, work the look like uh, as the guys that run Mir uh, behind the scenes. And if, if I can add to that is, uh, if someone is looking to work in your studio, and I'm sure there are many who, who want to do this, uh, what should they focus on uh, when they approach you? Yeah, the first question, <laughs> uh, me and Tron has kind of, uh, at the rather grown-up age, we got together 
uh, form, starting to form this company. It's been um, because we wanted to be uh, artists and make the images because this is what we like to do. Um, of course, uh, as the year uh, goes and we had more employees, we also had to do more of the managing role, and making sure that all the images, I mean all the concepts being developed was in line with our philosophy and looking good and also follow it all the way through to the final uh, delivery, uh, maintaining the, the, like the style and the quality that we think we need to have uh, uh, as a mere product. But, but, but now when we have reached like 10 to 14 people, uh, it's become clear to us that uh, our job in office uh, is more and more becoming uh, coaches or managers uh, than uh, actually doing the art. Which is uh, a little bit painful, uh, actually. But so then, then we have kind of split it up a little bit. We have been in every second week we're booked on a project, doing well, like all the other guys are doing. And every second week, the other guy is actually walking around, helping the teams that maybe need more support on difficult projects, making sure everything runs smoothly. But actually, now uh, we're reached 14 people. We see that we actually have to both of us have to do this uh, job. So now we, but we still uh, do. I mean, if there's some get some inquiries that we really think is uh, interesting and, and would fit the way we uh, or or a low uh, low te te technical level, <laughs> yeah, uh, then we we would still uh, really uh, enjoy to, uh, to to do this work as well and get critiqued by the rest of the team like like anyone would, yeah, uh, yeah. And the other question. Uh, wants to work in your studio I mean obviously you need to send portfolio but but what are the specific like I don't know three things that you would say they should focus on to get your attention yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm usually the guy who browses through the job interviews so I can uh, what usually happens is that we when we when you see a good portfolio it's like that you just browse through it and you see okay this is this is good and uh, then usually it misses um, like a a proper daytime sunny image. And that's like our uh, sort of test, uh, if it floats or sinks. Um, so we often ask for that, because that sort of reveals a little bit about the uh, uh, understanding of light and shadow. And it's, it's, it's like a very, in one way, it's a very easy thing to make, but it, it, to make it into something more is, is quite a, almost <laughs> like an achievement, like a normal daytime view with blue sky. So we ask for that. Um, not much more. We, uh, people have to fit. Uh, like, the, we have, <laughs> yeah, we always have this uh, little interview on Skype with people, and it's very important that we find a tone, can talk to each other, and all of this. Because our, uh, like with me and Mats, we're almost like uh, married now. We've been working. Uh, I, I'm more with him than my girlfriend, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But but I started to sort of love love him as as family. And it's becoming a bit like that with the rest of the team now as well. So you sort of have to make sure that people will fit Become into that. The and they have to find an interest or, or like a long-term interest in, in being a visualizer, visualizer, but also being sort of part of that mere thing. Uh, so we want people who sort of um, yeah, have their heart in the, in the game, sort of. But, but uh, portfolio-wise, there's no uh, like big secrets. We're, we're getting a little bit... Uh, sort of the interior images and also like this uh, one sort of pavilion in some sort of woods uh, rendered with some sort of standard scene. It's getting like something and it's a bit annoying because it always looks good but it doesn't really tell that much about the skill level of whoever sends it. So, so uh. I, I could just add something to that. Uh, just going, uh, going back to, um, you talked about the sunny daytime renders. Um, and, and then you think that, okay, I mean, it, the, like the stereotypical picture of what we do at me, let's say we have like a dark clouds and uh, this uh, strong sea depth of fog uh, and very desaturated themes. Uh, it's actually uh, not the most difficult to do because whether this uh, gray sky is a little bit brighter or a little bit darker and the mountains in the background are a little bit like this or that, it, it, it doesn't really matter in these type of images. But when you move to the, to the sunny daytime images with a clear blue sky, the vegetation, then all of a sudden it becomes very clear if something is not right. If, this, if, if the sky is a little bit off, the shadow of something is a little bit strange. 
and the shadow is too bright or too you, you instantly r spot the, the eye uh, the sensitivity in the eye of the artist uh, uh, in, in, the, in this image so so when people in the office uh, maybe they get assigned to do some residential project that have this kind of theme maybe oh yeah that this is maybe not the coolest project blah 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 and then i tell them but this is your challenge if you can make this good then you can make all the other uh, amazing uh, concert halls with the shadow, the dark themes, good. Um, so that's uh, just, and then just quickly on the um, quality before quantity in a portfolio submission. Um, and also, um, the, if you give us a few images and also can verbalize a little bit around the image, uh, not just attach a whole bunch of images. Yeah. Because then we can see uh, the mind and the idea and your thought process behind the image, and that tells us uh, a lot. Uh. Uh, and uh, if you are an architect looking for work in the archivist business, do not send your architectural portfolio with plans and text and all of this shit. I'm so <laughs> tired of reading through, through stuff like that. And it, it absolutely does not make sense, because we make images, and these images should stand on their own. Oh, this was great guys and thank you very much and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.